Steelers has kind of like an NFL feel. Why? Because this is NFL draft week, and Lobos' uh, prospective NFL hopefuls from the Lobos are around in town. And one joining me now is James Aho. And James, uh, I know that you are not 100%. Is it Roland? Like yeah. Or? Oh, okay. that's wrong. I'm sorry. I thought something was going on. I'll I'm sorry. Over. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. My fault. I was just right. putting my glasses. Yeah, I was like, going like, oh. Go ahead. Like, okay. Four, three, two, three, one. Sports office this week has an NFL field. The NFL draft is this week, and we have some Lobos who are NFL hopefuls, some uh, former Lobos, and one of them to my right here is James Aho, the kicker. And James, I know you're, you're expecting to go more free agency because kickers do that type of thing. They not, not a lot of kickers get drafted, but but what has been the process, man, as far as you off season getting ready for this? Uh, it's ever since season ended, you know, it's just been about uh, staying in shape, trying to trying to move things along and get things going on. Uh, just get the train rolling, you know. Just I had to talk to a lot of different coaches and a lot of different things, and there's uh, some special T coaches like uh, Louis Aguilar down in St. Louis and Mike Husted over in California and. Uh, they turn you on to these uh, mini combine series, is what they are. So the one they host is the National Combine Series, and they have it in San Diego and in uh, Las Vegas. And I went to the one in Las Vegas a couple weeks ago, and you know, it was just uh, it was a process that was long and drawn out. I mean, it started right after football season ended, and uh, now that it's over, it's kind of kind of hit me a little bit. I mean, why I was always just like, oh, I'm still playing sports because I was right. training for something. And now that I've trained for everything and I've completed the task, I mean, it's more just a waiting game. So you're, you're on that border. You're like, am I still going to play or am I done? What, what is that like as far as like, you know, you talked about the combine series. We're used to seeing guys doing their 40 times and stuff like that. But for kickers, what is the combine like, man? Is it, are you icing your legs at the end of the day, or what's going on? Uh, yeah, down in uh, Vegas, I mean, it was uh, pretty, pretty brutal. I mean, we are on the field four or five hours a day for a whole week. I was down there in Las Vegas for a whole week, and uh, it was, just, I mean, you most of the time you see guys going and they warm up and doing their plyometrics and right. whatever for 40 time or warming their chest up for bench press. and. And the, it just it doesn't do any of that. It completely bypasses everything that you would think of for a normal combine, and you more or less you get your hour, whatever you need. You could show up whenever you want to warm up, and then whenever it comes down to it, they say this is what it is, and this is what you have to do. So they'll put you somewhere, and then you have your field goals, and then after you do that, it's a little bit more weight, and you got to stay warm, you got to stay loose, and you get it's just more wandering around the field, you know, trying to keep your mind off things and then you go and you have your kickoffs and I mean you have a limited number and they don't let you do redos so it's is that nerve wracking? Um, the, at first it is and then like it's kind of like the first kick like my first kick of my college career <laughs> uh, it was, I was my coach coach Gonzalez you know he was he laughed at me he was up in the press box and he said he could see my legs shaking down on the field and <laughs> I looked like uh, there was an earthquake going through my body down there and just the, after that first kick you know it, everything just kind of just falls out it's like you shake off all the cobwebs you shake off all the rust you shake off any nerves or butterflies and you know everything just starts going like it's it was kind of like the same process as like my first kick you know because it was at a new level there's uh potentially nfl scouts there watching you and it was that first kick i had to focus so hard i just took some words that uh kenny bird told me one time he says on that first kick of every off season, like spring ball or fall camp or anything, he's like, that first kick, PAT or field goal, just take that, you know, breathe it in and make sure you focus completely is more than you've ever focused before on any other kick. And so that's what, that's kind of the mentality I've been using. And uh, I mean, I appreciate Kenny for everything he's ever done. He's always right. tried to help me, and he's All been, American, yeah, he's been through the whole process himself. You know, he played with the Lions against Hanson for a while, and. Um, I mean, I just, I really trust what he says, you know, he tells me different things. He coached me for a while during my sophomore off season, and I just, I learned a lot from him, and he pushed me in the right direction, I would want to say. Hey, so, so, um, one thing about it, um, you, uh, waiting for this draft, what do you expect out of the draft, and, and what, what are you hearing from your agent? I mean, like, I know that at the beginning of this, I said that you probably expect more free agency, but what are they telling you? Um, you know, I talked to uh, Louis Aguilar. He's the guy I've been working with uh, 
and I flew out to St. Louis right after uh, winter break, and he told me more or less, like, most of the time, the only guys that are going to have agents are the guys that got invited to the Combine. So I don't have an agent right now, but the guys that went to the NFL Combine, the kickers, they usually have agents. But he said he, he played for Kansas City and the Jets and some other teams as a punter and a kicker. And he didn't have an agent for his first years or so in uh, the NFL. And he said it's really not a necessity for a kicker to have an agent because, I mean, you're going to market yourself is what he said. Right. He says it's more just using your abilities to show them what you got at tryouts and or like the combine series and i mean it's just i don't know how to say it. it's just uh it's a it's a tough situation for a kicker you know because there's only one spot and right. so agents are kind of on the border maybe picking up a specialist that may or may not ever get to the league or just with tryouts because they're not getting any benefit out of it. So, so are you, uh, <clears throat> since you're, how do you feel like you did, how do, how do you feel like you did perform at the, uh, at the one of the combine series? Uh, I think I performed really well. You know, I talked to uh, the coaches afterwards and they say, you know, just uh, keep working, you know, it's all about timing. He says, could take a year or two or maybe if you're willing to stay in it three to four years to even get in the league out of college. He says it's because I mean there's guys in there that are 35 or 40 kicking in the NFL still and uh, it's just more just opportunity you gotta you gotta see the the opportunity and you just gotta go with it and it's just a matter of trying to stay focused enough to stay in the game long enough to make it to that level. So, so they're telling you like, uh, it's hard for guys, for kickers, to latch on the first year? Yeah, uh, Mike Husted, uh told me, he said, you know, um, there's probably one or two open spots in the NFL right now for kickers. And he says it's more or less just, you know, doing good at these, the combine series and hopefully getting a tryout so your name stays in the, the books for a while, you know, that say you have a trial with someone they're gonna be like oh well this guy performed really well but we're gonna stay with our veteran guy until oh. until he falls out you know and then they're gonna be like well they'll pass your information and the, like so and so calls whatever team and they're like well we need a kicker and they're like well you could pick up this guy he did really good at our training camp and okay it there we're like chess pieces you know we just get tossed around <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome man hey what so what um are you expecting to to uh maybe hit something the right time i mean it's just I mean, because you were among some of the best kickers in the country, uh, do you feel like, man, I, I see an opportunity here, I just got to keep grinding? Yeah, I mean, I, I myself want to believe I have an opportunity because, you know, everybody, I've been in athletics my whole life and that's just become like a way of life to me yeah. and I didn't, I probably wouldn't know what to do if I didn't have athletics, you know. Right. I'd be like lost and, I'd be like a lost puppy trying to find my way <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I mean, I would love to, I just given the opportunity is you just got to take it and go. And so knowing that and knowing what I've been told from other coaches and stuff, um, you just got to, you just got to go with it. And I mean, I'm willing to stay in the game and then it's just, I love, I mean, going out and kicking, it's just a good stress reliever. I mean, even, even when I don't have anything to do, like during college, if I was upset or bored or anything you know just it takes up time and it feels good and it just releases a lot of tension and just trying to stay in the game I would wouldn't be a problem for me I love I mean I like to work out and I like to do different things so trying to be on a competitive edge and stay and give it the full two three years is just an everyday kind of thing for me hey so so uh you plan on giving it the full two or three years huh? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not gonna give up anytime soon. I I mean, I'm pretty determined to even get a shot. So, and I I think I did exceptionally well at these camps, and that uh, my name will be put out in the right manner, and then I I should have an opportunity at least for a tryout or something. And is what I hope for. So, and if I I just want to try out, to, you know, to say that you know I did it. You know, I I made it this far, and my name's in the books, and. My, I could be passed around and I could get a call any day of the year just saying, hey, we need a kicker. Are you, will, are you willing to come kick for us? You know, so. And what, what about uh, your background? Soccer, huh? Soccer was, uh, soccer players make the best kickers, you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, 
obviously playing soccer, you have a natural ability to kick a soccer ball and just translating that over. Which I found out is uh, there's a lot more mechanical stuff to kicking a football than to a soccer ball. I mean, soccer is just a lot more free form and going at it. But there's there's a, there's a good technique for field goal kicking, and I never believed that until I actually started kicking the ball. And you know, just to become consistent and on a good basis, like having that exceptional kick right. 10 out of 10 times is, it's more about the technique and the skill set than just knowing how to kick a ball. Well, you know, being a kicker, you could either have a high high or a low low. What's your highest high as a low ball? What's your lowest low? Um, I mean, I've had multiple highs in my career. I felt like my first one came whenever I made my first field goal against TCU, you know. Uh, it was just a big day for me and for my parents and my family, you know, because we made it to a new level out of high school. And then after that, it would probably have to be the Arizona game my freshman year. And then just uh, the big games from there on out, such as like uh, Wyoming and Colorado State and just uh, New Mexico State games and stuff like that, you know. And then Lowe's, I would have to say, you know, being in tough situations where you're 50 yards out and you have to make a field goal to tie the game to send it into overtime, like uh, New Mexico State, like three years ago, and it's just, it's just like uh, the whole game doesn't rest on you, but it feels like it does because like you're on an island after. Yeah, you feel like you're isolated from everybody because you feel like it's your play that's gonna make or break the whole game. But in our reality, you know, football, it's a team sport, so everything leading up to that situation will cause the win or loss, but, you know, being a kicker, you put most of the blame on yourself when you miss those or you don't come up producing the way you want to. So I'm to take from this, you slept well against Colorado State in, those, in an Aggie game, maybe you didn't sleep so well. Those, when <laughs> stuff like that happens. Yeah, there's a little tossing and turning, you know, just uh, <laughs> trying to nestle myself to sleep. And Is it like uh, Ace Ventura, man, when they kept saying, Lakes is out? <laughs> <laughs> I, Are you like having nightmares? <laughs> yeah, there was, there was that time, you know, that you're going to practice the next day and you're just like, oh, man, everybody hates me. And you're just like, <laughs> it's very, it's a very weird feeling. And then you realize everyone's like, okay, well, the offense didn't do this. Defense gave up this. And then they really don't, the good team, they don't put the blame on that one person because they know all together as a whole, it was the whole football team. But every time I messed up, you know, I was, I like, I liked, to take the blame myself. Yeah. I mean, it helped me grow. It helped me grow as a person in and out of athletics. And, you know, just uh, taking the blame, you know, it shows character. I mean. I agree. And you know what? And you, kickers, you guys are tough guys because that's a lot to carry. And so that's what I think. I think kickers are tough guys because if you got a guy mentally weak kicking, he's, he's not going to be able to bounce back. But you guys have to be like, no, man, hey, you know, I missed that one. I, I won't miss this one. <laughs> you know, you have to like be ready to go because you don't know how many times you can be called upon in the game or anything like that. So, you got to take something up here, man. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's more just uh, patience, I guess. You have to have a lot of patience because there's games such as Oregon uh, when we yeah. played up in Eugene. Oh yeah. I didn't even get a step on the field except for warm-ups and halftime to to warm back up and not I to. Bet that was just Oh, uh, I'll just, we'll forget about that one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a it's that a, was a hard one, man. It's a horrible thing to to sit there and anticipate because you know the quarterback will make a big play and you're like, oh well, the ball's moving. Better get ready, you know. Yeah. Come in, it's got ten, ten, 10 more yards. That's all I need. Ten more yards and we're in field goal range, and you you would expect to do it, and then you know three plays go by and it doesn't happen, so you ended up punting, and it's just you have to be ready for it at all times, and it's just. It's a, it's a weird game to play, but, I mean, you have to, you have to enjoy it. Well, James A. Holt, I hope I'm seeing your name in the box scores for NFL games very soon. Thank you for coming on. And uh, James A. Holt, look for him, because he's probably going to be in the NFL pretty soon here. If not, have you ruled out indoor and, and uh, Canadian League and all that stuff? No, uh, their season's pretty much already started, so that would have to... <laughs> That would have to wait for another off season, so I'd have to wait right. till next year or so to even put that into the the books. But this right now, all the focus is just NFL, and you know I'm working at it, and I'm going to continue working at it till I get some kind of result. All right.
All right, James Abel, one of the most successful kickers in Lobos history, joining us in the sports office. And we'll see you next time.